and welcome to Gen Friends. I'm your host, Sherry Hudson Passy from Carolina Girl Genealogy. And as usual, we've got a fabulous panel and a special guest. So let me get through this wonderful panel first, and then I'll introduce our guest. We have Melissa Barker, our archive lady. Hi, Melissa. Hello, glad to be here. Glad you're here. We've got Mary Kirchirati from MKR Genealogy. Hi, Mary. Hello there. <laughs> it's good to have you here. And we have Shelly Murphy, our family tree girl. Hey, hey, Shelly, how are you? Hi. Good evening. Glad to be here tonight. <laughs> Glad you're here, too. We also have Laura, and Laura's going to kind of be part of this discussion tonight, too, because she's got some little interest in some of the things that we're going to be talking about. So Laura Hedgecock is here from Treasure Chest of Memories. Hi, Laura. Hi. It's good to be here. So glad you're here. I love you guys. I've got such a great panel. <laughs> Our special um, guest tonight is Rick Voigt, and you know him from Vivid Picks. I know you've seen a wonderful product, but they actually have some new educational opportunities coming up and also some new um, printing projects and so, or products, I should say. So we invited Rick to come on and talk to us. And like I said, Laura has got a little bit to do with some of these things too. So she's kind of like double duty, a special guest plus a regular panel member. <laughs> So anyway, Rick, tell us a little bit about what y'all are doing, these new educational opportunities and new things for, for printing. What's happening? Uh, well, thanks for having me on. And first off, it's nice to be uh, speaking just up the road, being here in Charleston, South Carolina today. And yes, I do travel uh, quite a bit, as we were chatting about before we came on. So it's nice to be home in Charleston. <laughs> and In uh, rainy Charleston. It's rainy South Carolina is what we've got right now. <laughs> It is, and, but we're not in Texas right now. Oh, right? yes. Our hearts squelch everybody in Texas tonight. It's just, it's terrible there. So, uh, so Vivid Picks, yeah. So we, we've been around for 10 years as a company for the last six years. A lot of you have gotten to know us with our restore software that automatically improves faded photos and documents and add metadata. And, and Actually, it's too bad that Dan isn't on this call because <laughs> coming coming out of Roots Tech back in 2020, um, the world kind of changed on all of us. And and so 2020 or 2019, which one was it? It was 2020. <laughs> 2020, 2020 was the last one. Was the last okay. one. We all got out of there before we, the world got sick. <laughs> exactly. So coming out of Roots Tech 2020. And our world changed. And it started kind of a progression of things, which is a lot of people were, were needing to gain their education in different ways. And a lot of people also found the time to get around to some of the things they've always wanted to do, which mm -hmm. is to pull the photos out of the closet, pull their ancestry information out and really do their genealogy. And so it, it, it headed us down a path to develop a lot of different education. So what we're doing, and I'll spin it around here for a moment to allow y'all to ask a couple of questions. But the, the idea for education came is, do people understand how to pull all this information out of the closet? Do they understand how to do the scanning? Do they know how to do the organization of their images? Do they know how to tell the stories? Um, we ended up doing some research on photo reminiscence therapy. So um, are there ways that we can interact with people who may have cognitive decline mm -hmm. or just may mm -hmm. becoming a little forgetful? Mm -hmm. so, so we've developed a whole series of education, which Laura can chime into here a little bit, um, in order to allow people to do more with their photos and, and to pass that information on to future um, generations and just family history in general. Mm -hmm. Well, it can be, it can be overwhelming. You know, you've got boxes upon boxes, you know, mm -hmm. people will say, here's, here's my photos, here's the boxes. And you go, oh, I'm going to do something with this. And then before you know it, it's, <laughs> and it gets <laughs> overwhelming. And you're like, where on earth am I supposed to start doing this? So I think education on that is important. And I also wanted to, to touch base on what you said about using photos as therapy. I think that's really, really important as we have a um, more and more people um, have, getting dementia, Alzheimer's, those types of things. My grandmother had Alzheimer's and I made her a book and I made it so that the nurses could, it was right by her bedside and it had her parents, her sisters, her both husbands, 
all the grandchildren, everybody was in this book. And I wrote it like a story. So they would read it to her every day until she couldn't, she couldn't even, didn't even recognize that, but she would get so excited. Um, so mm -hmm. I do know that photos have that power. So I think it's important that, that Vivid Pics has recognized that as well. Well, and so let me stay on the on the therapeutic side of photos mm -hmm. for a moment. So, so I've been in the photo business for 37 years this year. So I spent a bunch of years at Kodak at HP and then with VividPix, and um, I've seen I've seen wonderful, wonderful things occur when people look at photographs. And and my mom was 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 probably my large as many moms are my biggest cheerleader as I progressed through life, and um, and as I got to a certain stage in life, and her 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 personality was able to remember fifty years ago a lot better than fifty seconds ago, I started to to recognize that if I don't capture these stories now that knowledge is going to go away and and then i'm i also love my mother immensely and and as much as i love spending time with her when the first time you start going through hearing the same question time after time after time for an hour or two yes. it it gets hard yeah. and wanting to spend time with that loved one so I, so I started to do research into photo reminiscence therapy, and then we did primary research with a memory care facility, four facilities down in Orlando, so that we were actually able to put real knowledge into how would we use these. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. I love that. I love yeah. That. Why don't Why don't you tell them a little bit about the study, Rick? Um and talk a little bit about Josh who we all know and love or how how you actually so before I speak more Laura <laughs> I I called you up well we've known each other for a couple of years and then I called you up more specifically about a year ago and said I, I I'm thinking about expanding our education so so describe if you could kind of this this broader vision we worked on together yeah so basically, what I love about it is it's exactly what Sherry said. It's not just here, scan, here's piles of stuff to do and scan it. So what Vivid Pix is doing is kind of going full circle. And so there's Kathy Nelson, I have to get her name right, who um, has a series of classes on photo organization. And then there's Josh Freitas, who is this brilliant neuropsychologist who works at this Sartis Institute in Florida. And he first he was doing music therapy and now he's gone into photo reminiscence therapy. And he knows so much about using photos to improve like the sense of well-being, not just um, to reminisce for the family, but to increase the the experience that caregivers have with their patients as well as to help the patients be more compliant with things like their medication. Yeah. And then I am doing how to take all those scans and put them into stories. And then you have some on just taking better family and um, portrait photos. So it's that whole circle that he has. So um, I actually really, really enjoyed you know, meeting Josh, and I love neuropsychology. I think brain science is super fascinating, but it especially is when, you know, one of the things I asked Josh too was some of us, we talk about always going and looking at photos, old time, you know, you're living in the past, isn't that nostalgia, you know, when is that bad? But really, when you think about it, what's happening is as people keep going back down that path and looking at that childhood that's no longer available to them, they still have this self-identity that they keep building up. And that's what leads to the better, the better health, the better um, emotional state, et cetera. Hmm. So it, it's, kind, it's really kind of exciting, the whole circle and how they all feed into each other. Question. Go ahead. 
but you don't have to be at a certain stage or a moment in time for this type of therapy. This can be used anytime. I mean, right. I Kelly, you go bring the, get the box of pictures and do the same yeah. thing now being you know 70 or, or 50 or whatever and I don't have to be you know I don't want to say sick but Alzheimer's or having something that's coming so can that therapy not be used currently as well in in a regular state maybe or a usual state does that make sense <laughs> Completely. And in fact, um, so a little bit about our research. So, uh, so, so the way that we approach the research is National Institutes of Health and subpart of National Institutes of Health, National Institute on Aging, had, has an overview view of how do you use photos or memorabilia um, in order to be able to prompt conversation. So reminiscing, reminiscence therapy. And then Harvard, what they actually did some research on is, is as people become less active, let's say that you retire and you become mm -hmm. less active, your brain is, is, is not firing off the, mm -hmm. across the synapses quite the same way. You're not creating neurogenesis in order to either A, relive old thoughts or, and or memories or B, create new memories. And so, um, so what Harvard speaks to is, is that in order to create a buffer against early onset of Alzheimer's and the like, you ought to be doing activities that keeps your brain active. Mm -hmm. So, so that was the, the genealogy family history idea I had, which is, is, is that our generation, my generation, I'm old, um, is, is that we, we, we love family history. We like genealogy. There are more people that like family history and where I came from mm -hmm. than like genealogy. Right. So what, so why don't we, why don't we create the conversation around family history in order to be able to make them exercise their brain doing the roots mm -hmm. or, or writing down their own stories or learning new computer skills or mm -hmm. learning how to write and have a new skill. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing to really exercise the brain? So you're a thousand percent right, Shelley, is, is that it's not just for those with cognitive decline. And then for those with cognitive decline, that, as Josh speaks about, is, is we actually have three brains. We have our brain, we have our heart, and we have our gut. And those three brains are kind of how we remember things. And so if we're able to stimulate those thoughts mm -hmm. by looking at a photograph, it allows that neurogenesis, that connection across our parts in order to remember things. Um, so it gets into the positive effect of reminiscing. Mm -hmm. So and fascinating. Yeah, that is fascinating. I was just thinking about I've got a I've got a son who's 20 and he's you know nowhere near having mental <laughs> issues as far as forgetting things, but he loves to text me and say, Can you send me some pictures of when I was here or when we went to the beach? He just loves that and I think it's a good boost for his soul is to look at those little you know baby pictures or whatever they may be. So I think emotionally it's good for us to see those connections and, you know, the siblings all hugging each other or being with grandma or whatever it might be. He, he will just every once in a while to say, can you send me some pictures of me and maybe this particular sibling or his grandfather who he was really close to or who, what, or just pictures of himself when he was maybe three or at the beach or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So I really do think that there's, there's a lot to it. There is. It, 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 I have an echo, sorry. There, it's almost like music therapy too, that they use it in therapeutic situations, but we yeah. all get something out of listening to music. Yes. So it's the Go, kind of the same, yeah. the same thing. Melissa, yeah. you said Remind you to come, Oh, sorry, Shelly, Melissa had put it in the chat. That she's yeah. Go ahead. Go, Go ahead, Shelly. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to make a comment. I remember the expression on a genealogy trip my mom and I went to, and we were meeting a distant, distant cousin. Had no idea 
the mental capacity, but there was no verbal. Uh, we, again, we'd never met her, made arrangements. Wow. And when we got there, because we got a box of pictures, mm. you know, that was delivered to us, who we didn't know the people in the pictures. The look on this woman's face, the tears, the oh, grins, God. the, you know, the hugging of us, of her looking at those pictures. And we have no idea. All I can say is she knew who was in those pictures because <laughs> she couldn't tell us, couldn't tell you. you know, oh. which we were in a new area researching and this, oh. that, and other, but that, and, and it was Alzheimer's and she was at a, a later kind of a going into a different stage. And, you know, we find that out later because she got in a car with me and she's going to take me to a cousin's house. Oh. And I said, something's not right. <laughs> <I'm gonna turn laughs> right back, you know, to the house. But again, that I just remember that whole moment ah. we're showing the pictures and she's pointing at them. And again, we didn't even know she couldn't communicate till oh. we were there. So we went for whatever we could. <laughs> Yeah. You know, but it was just fascinating because yeah. that brain was just bringing it, you know. Okay. And so at least we knew we were among family. And I'll just exactly. leave it Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we were among yeah. family. Oh, that, that's a special story. Go ahead, that's Melissa. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've shared this before, but um, I did a project several years ago where I'm the keeper of the family stuff, as some of us are. And um, and so, I mean, it's been known that I had a cousin once that just sent me his oil box where he got his oil for his car. And he filled it with a bunch of pictures that he had and just threw it in the mail and never even told me they were coming. And they showed up. So, But several years Love ago, um, when my mother was still living, my aunt, which is her sister, and my grandmother, who actually had Alzheimer's, um, was all still living. I decided to take some of the photographs. I had a lot of photographs not identified. And what I decided to do is I started January 1, and I would email out one photograph. And I would ask everyone, who, what, when, where, what, what can you look at this photograph, tell me. And so I sent it out to my mom's cousin, some of the older you know, people that were still mm -hmm. living. A lot mm -hmm. of these people are no longer here. And, um, and so, and I did that for an entire year. Every day I sent a different photograph and the the comments that I got even you know that they knew what the car was or yeah, they knew yeah. that store where they were or you know it, it didn't have to be identifying the people just anything and so but my grandmother got to participate she wasn't you know online but my aunt would get the email because she was living with my aunt and would talk to her and show her the photograph and uh, she had not lost her speech yet, but she could talk and she could remember oh. things. And so I did that for an entire year and they wanted me to do it another year, but it was very, <laughs> that was very <laughs> taxing to do yeah. that every day right. for a year. Right. But I was so glad that I did that um, yeah. because not only do I have now all of that information that I've gleaned for that entire year, but I was able to identify and yeah. to label a lot of photographs. I still had more. <laughs> but um but yeah but, we all have more yeah, yeah, I have more. <laughs> we yeah, all have um, that but they can yeah. but it's you know you're talking about how to do these projects and when I get asked mm -hmm. that question as an archivist you know how because as archivist we get boxes and boxes and boxes dumped on us uh they come in and they say here you go and you know and so as archivists what do we do um we have a system you know we learn as archivists how to archive records but I tell genealogists, do it one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. If you have a large box of records, open the box, take out 10 photographs, close the box. <laughs> yeah. Don't look at the box, put the box under the bed, you know, just, <laughs> but take out 10 photographs and then do your process, you know, yeah. digitize them, add yeah. your metadata, um, identify them, talk to family members. When you're done with those 10 photographs, then you're allowed to get 10 more photographs. <laughs> 10 more. <laughs> But, you and know, then, that's that way you don't get overwhelved. Right. And then you use and, them and and that's what I hear all the time. cleaner, right? You, you use a product. Yes, and you put, them in, you put them in sleeves yeah. or you put them in archival file, uh, <laughs> yeah. photo albums. Yeah. And so one of, the things, more, yeah. one of the things I think that is really, um, that I find really interesting, and it really started when we saw Brandon Stanton at Roots Tech, and he's from Humans of New York. Yes. And he was talking about how to get the the most, the more stories and not just the data, mm -hmm. not just the date. Mm -hmm. Part of what he said was that you you it's not like you act like you're interested. You have to be interested because then your mm -hmm. body responds, your eyes respond, and you get the stories instead of 
the, oh, that was our 1956 Buick. <laughs> to get, oh, that's the car that, yes. you know, Lair picked me up when the, when we went on our first date. Yeah, yeah. And you get a little more yeah. of the story. So well, that's why really, I, I, that's why I tell genealogists never ask about the people first in the photograph. Yeah. Exactly. Because you will stump you them. You will stump you? them immediately, and then they can't uh, go any further. Yeah. Yep. So I exactly. ask them about the car, or about the house, or, or the whatever <laughs> is in, you know, or the lamp <laughs> on the night on the table in the living room, you know. But if you ask about the people, and the and then they immediately can't, don't remember, then they're done. It's they're done. They're, it's really interesting true. that they're really done. That is true. Yeah. So, or even well or even if they can't remember the model of the car or all that i mean a lot of times the more open ended the the yeah. better yes um what can you know what can you tell me and a lot of times if they don't know oh this was i don't know what we were doing at that at that beach well was that something typical you did well yeah we went every sunday to the beach mm -hmm. yeah cuz this this is the the relatives in grand rapids Shelley. so it's just the hot skip <laughs> And so then yeah, you we, get we went north every weekend in the fort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mackinac so get, Island, Mackinac Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> you can say, well, then you get what typically would have happened, which might even be more valuable than what was in that photo that day. Yeah, that's cool. So, so Rick, do you have um, these courses on your website? Do you have um, varying um, courses? We talked about the organization and, and those types of things. So, and I know Laura's been working on doing some things too for you. So are those on the website that people can go and, and check out and tell yep, us about? they are. Yep. So on our website, um, and I can share here for a moment. Yeah. yeah, you share. Last time I tried to share it knocked me off, right, guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was ugly. It was bad. <laughs> I had no idea you guys did classes. Did it just start? Well, so I'll share two things. So <laughs> we have underneath our education button, mm -hmm. we have uh -huh. a ton of education. Yeah. So, so on our education site, we've got gathering traditions. Uh, we own the, the magazine, Reams Magazine, activities for family members, how to Zoom, tips and tricks. We created a whole educational series on for genealogy librarians, for patrons to come into libraries in order to be able to have information be provided to them. So we have a lot of education. Um, and what we have done behind the scenes, and it is coming up this week, mm -hmm. is that on courses, this page is becoming the education page. So we're going to continue mm -hmm. offering all of the free education that we have in the past. And then we've got classes on uh, printed photo organizing made easy. So Kathy is a rock star. She's a wonderful person. Um, so she is the founder of a group called the Photo Managers. And the Photo Managers are around a thousand people around the world that will come out to your home and get your photographic life in order. So, <laughs> so not everyone can afford in to home intervention. Else. I like that. <laughs> So she's created, it's literally a 40 part class in wow. order to be able to organize your photos. Yeah. Um, and then two, we've got two sections with Laura. So the first section is for you and I. So, so we would like to be able to extract the information from our loved ones, from our own knowledge in order to tell our stories and other people's stories. But then we're also training people in libraries or senior living facilities or community centers where this is another class for an extra $100 on top of the 79 for people to be able to be learn to learn how to help mm -hmm. others like in the that. process. Mm -hmm. And and then with Josh, um, so Josh and, and Laura was, was thoughtful of, Josh is just an amazing man. 
He is he is Berkeley Medicine. He is Harvard Health. He's he's just brighter than heck and just a super nice man. Um, so we similarly for loved ones, um, for for me interacting with mom or for a child interacting with a grandparent or for exercising your brain for family use and then also for professional use. Uh, gotcha. And we, and then we've we've actually integrated that in with NIDE, so National Institute for Dementia Education. Mm -hmm. This allows a certification class for people to be able to become certified by NIDE in photo reminiscence therapy. And this is not a, you know, you're not becoming a psychiatrist, a therapeutic counselor, right? <laughs> but but you become certified in phono reminiscence therapy by NIDE. So it's, I think it's a two, two CE for somebody to actually be able to learn um, in order to be able to have it be part of your job. Wow. And then of course, we've got these additional parts of education as well that we had up before. Mm -hmm. So yep, all of this is is up and up and running. And yeah, um, we decided that we wanted to share it with you this week early. That's great. You know, I I love these courses. I love the fact that you've taken it to the next level to teach people how to go in and, and share it and be able to use mm -hmm. it in, in nursing homes or, or you know, um, adult, um, the, the centers where they, they go during the day and, and things like that. So adult that, daycare, the adult daycare. Yeah. Um, so that you can go yeah. in and share these things. And, and, you know, I know they have other activities, but go ahead, Laura. Yeah, and Rick has that bundled, all this education, with this, the scanning station that you mm. saw at NGS, Sherry mm, yes. and, and Mary, so that, like, mm. one of the places it's installed is the Allen County um, Public Library, and so people then, well, he's going to show you. <laughs> as, a, as a matter so of fact. would this training be good for caregivers as well? Absolutely. So, because, so the, you know, you think of that, you know, for fame, what a nice idea, <laughs> a gift. Yeah. 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 So, so what we've done is, is we've created this bundle and the bundle then allows either a, the scanner itself sells for $579. It's an amazing scanner. Fujitsu is actually the largest scanning company in the world. And they have over a 90%, 90% share within the health industry. Um, so as, as we were choosing the partner that we wanted to look, work with, one, we wanted a great scanner. And two, we wanted to work with a company that understood what we were striving to do. Um, mm -hmm. So they love what we're up to. Um, and, then, and then two, we've got the bundle. So it combines Restore and the scanner for $599. And then three is uh, for $799, the, a home is able to get an amazing scanner with Restore software and all of this education. Um, and then for an extra $200 from a commercial perspective, mm -hmm. then you can actually get the certification for your patrons or for um, senior living and the like. And um, Laura just mentioned Allen County Public Library. So they're, we all know that they're wonderful people. Um, and they've been another group that have been kind of in the know of what Rick was up to for all this time. So we've got <laughs> two of the memory stations installed at Allen County right now. Two, um, Allison Dupre Singleton, um, actually did an interview with genealogy guys last week and she oh, let the cool. cat okay she let the cat out of the bag a little bit uh, <laughs> which 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 is this is that Allen County has begun having conversation with the senior living facilities oh. in and around the library in and around the library so that the libraries are no longer just delivering books to the senior living communities, they're actually bringing genealogy and family history and scanning and stories and all these things into our senior living facilities oh, wow. and also bringing those people back into the libraries. So it's it's just wonderful. It sounds like it, yeah. yeah it sounds fabulous. So it's like a win-win for everybody, you know? When I saw the scanner, I had to look and I thought, okay, this is scan snap over here, send over here. <laughs> Not and, quite the same, right? 
Uh, probably not. No, I have the, you know, no, that's the desktop one. And I have another one, you know, that I haul with me. But um, it's just the, the whole process, you know, you think about, we all enjoy looking at a photo. Mm -hmm. And and I'm going to go back to what Laura said, but it's the story that goes yes. with that photo. Yes. You know, and Absolutely. and when you show people, regardless of what age or whatever it is, and I have a 92 year old in the other room, the photos, they are overwhelming, you know, as we heard earlier today. And so I'm going to try that and say, don't bring out the whole album. Let me just take a few pages, yeah. Yeah. you know, which will have pictures because it it wears her out. Oh, you sure. know, and it's too overwhelming because she's always wanting to organize and try to put stuff back. And so if I can change that little concept there to do. That was it a good tip from work. Melissa. Melissa's always full of good tips when it comes to these. Absolutely. <laughs> Love it, archive lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mother-in-law, she always says, I don't, I don't want to be talking about the past all the time. I don't want to go through that. And what do you think we talk about? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I think what she doesn't want is the formality of it. Right. Yeah. But if in conversation something comes up and we'll say, and what was that like when you were young? Mm -hmm. And off we go. Yeah. And you yeah, know, I've I known her for 34 years. And I swear two weeks ago she told me stories I had never heard. It was kind oh, of wow. annoying. Like how <laughs> come it took 34 years to get this? <laughs> I do a whole presentation about dragging genealogy research out of your family. Yeah, you do. And, exactly. you know, and, and I tell people to use things like recipes or food. Yeah, yeah, food, yeah. food brings out, because you, t the taste, the, your mm -hmm. senses, taste and smell, especially smell, mm -hmm. uh, but taste as well. Make an old family favorite uh, mm -hmm. and share it with a family member. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, don't start badgering them with questions, but just, you know, slowly start talking about that you made this, that, that, you know, grandma used to make it or whoever used to make it. And I guarantee you, you start doing this and they don't know that they're talking to you about family history. Yeah, they don't. You know, you, and I talk about <laughs> using photographs. I talk about, um, yeah. you know, using all different kinds of things to help them, especially when they tell you, because my family told me the same thing. I don't remember anything. Right. We didn't talk about it. Yeah, you know, but if I come there's out a way, though. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's the exact right themselves. word triggers. Yeah, and <laughs> usually one, one story will yeah. generate another story and exactly. another story and different stories. stories. But I think story. what's fun, fun is they they don't if you can get like brothers and sisters together. It's the same the same memory of the occasion, but they remember it a little bit differently. A little differently. I, yeah. I, think I, that's have, a perfect, I have a perfect story yeah. for that, too. Okay. My brother and I were in a family get-together at my parents' house, and this has been several years because both of my parents are now gone, but we were standing outside just chatting. You know, it, it, it was, I wasn't there to ask any questions or nothing. We were just chatting. And I just made the comment. I said, you know, I said, we really grew up in a, in a wonderful family. And he turned around mm -hmm. and looked at me and he said, what family did you grow up in? <gasps> oh, no. Now, my, bro now, my brother is six years older than me, okay? And I looked at him uh and I said, well, we had a very good family life. It's almost like a leave it to beaver family. He says, I don't know what family you grew up in, <laughs> but we had a very dysfunctional family. Well, you know, I had to remember that he lived six years with my parents and my family before I came along. Yeah. And then you add on right. that I wasn't aware for more years. That's right. He saw and experienced things that I didn't, or that maybe stopped mm -hmm. by the when time I was aware. Along. And so that was an extremely interesting conversation that had that only I will never forget, but that taught me as a genealogist mm -hmm. about do about those things, about how siblings and cousins and even people who lived under the same roof of you as you yeah. experience something totally different and what's important that we try to talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. My, my kids have stories. They'll tell me, did you know this or this happened? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I didn't know. Or they'll swear that something happened that you know didn't happen, but they're in their little head. Do you know what I mean? When they were little, like I've got a daughter that swears that when she was about three or four years old, we left her home all by herself. I've never done that. And so we think she was just in a part of the house, 
by herself just didn't know where anybody else was but she swears yeah. to this day we left her all alone in the house and that never happened so <laughs> it's just it's funny. you know yeah laura what i love about melissa's example is too that we don't want just to gather the information and to know about each other's past we want to have these conversations yes and if you hadn't been reminiscing and stated your opinion you wouldn't have gotten that reaction and yeah. you wouldn't have had that really meaningful conversation yeah absolutely you yeah. realize that you know he's in a different place mm -hmm. so and he remembered it and experienced it differently too yeah, yeah. And, absolutely and yeah you brought up about the recipes and things and i got a call from my son he said didn't janine sister dot my daughter but he said didn't janine grow up in this just happened a couple of weeks ago didn't janine and i grow up in the same house i said what <laughs> <laughs> he said she just told me she's never had eggplant before <laughs> and i said what do you mean she's never had eggplant what vegetarian doesn't eat eggs? <laughs> I named off all the dishes. And he said, but that's what I thought. But she said she's never had, she had eggplant over in Naples. And it was a big deal for her. And he said, <laughs> but didn't we grow up in the same house? Because I know you made eggplant parmesan and all this stuff. Those and are so funny I things. That was so happen. crazy. Yeah. yeah. But I actually had just the last week, one of my boys and his wife was visiting his two brothers and they called me from the car like what is going on I thought maybe something was wrong and I get this mom mom I always make a spinach artichoke dip at Christmas and I put it in a a sourdough bowl and then they just uh -huh. I mean, sourdough bread bowl you know you make pull the bread out and they were arguing about how I made it so I thought at first they wanted the recipe, but no, because one of the boys said, no, she, it's not a recipe. She just opens a bottle of ranch. <laughs> ranch <laughs> dressing. I was like, no, no, please don't go through your life telling people that that's how I made the spinach artichoke sourdough bread bowl dip. No, it was not just. So, I mean, it just happened. Like guys are so yeah. weird. just things that they it's remember not just hidden valley no you work hard these, are, on that. these are kids that are <laughs> anywhere from 24 to 31 that they were having this conversation these were like, like not like you know teenagers or something Laura uh, <laughs> my my eldest was 25 before he figured out that grandma's special garlic bread was actually from the frozen the frozen <laughs> food department <laughs> I love it. Don't you tell him any different. <laughs> I didn't. Don't. He finally started shopping for himself. And like, <laughs> he's like, this tastes just like grandma makes. Because we all have that memory if we were around a grandmother or auntie yeah. or something. Of the no. Some dish they were known for or whatever, you Absolutely. know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. How fun. Well, what else is going on in Vivid Picks? You've got these wonderful classes is there anything else that you wanted to share with us or well um so you mentioned printing before yes. uh so it's um so in my jaded past i used to spend a lot of time in the print business at kodak and hp and i didn't really want to get into the print business until until we had something unique so the first unique thing is something called a a memory wall so at vivid dash picks dash prints Dot com or off of our website mm -hmm. um, solutions vivid vivid picks uh, prints you'll come to it um, so the memory wall actually allows you to be able to predefine a collage wall mm -hmm. and and it's delivered to your home so that it's easy to put up as opposed huh. to if you ever tried to make them go up straight um, <laughs> It, yeah. uh -huh. and, and the answer is no, they don't. Well, this actually <laughs> does go up straight. Um, and then two, from a research perspective, is um, from, from memory care perspective, is this is that sometimes people may not remember a word or they need to have mm -hmm. a picture communicate 
that it's breakfast or it's time to brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. Or Laura mentioned a little bit ago um, that through our research, we actually were able to have up to a 50%, 5-0% improvement in medication compliance. Mm -hmm. Just by being able to start a conversation with somebody before you ask them to take their meds. Mm -hmm. and, and so to have kind of a brag book that is well, like you were doing, Sherry, Mm -hmm. that that people were able to interact with your grandmother I think you had said beforehand yes, yes. and 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 you're having a conversation or relationship before somebody starts saying take your meds Mrs. Jones yeah so so you'll whole, see a whole series of additional print products I that will that. allow yeah. us to be able to help interact with mm -hmm. those with cognitive decline and interact as individuals I love that. I love that you're thinking yeah. about that community. Such it's a it's a powerful pictures are a powerful thing. They, I just really I do. I think they're powerful, and there's so much more that we can do with photos and and stories and and and. Mary, I thought for a minute you wanted to say something. I I was actually gonna um ask you a little bit more about that, Rick. I um I have a very dear friend. She is the one who sucked me into genealogy. 22 years ago um and i i owe her so much um and and i feel like the world owes her because of that everyone except my brother he's not so happy about it but you know how that goes um and she has in the last few years i'm gonna get all teared up um and have showed quite a bit of cognitive decline and um, was diagnosed at the beginning of 2020 with early onset Alzheimer's. And um, just recently, she has had to be institutionalized. Mm. Um, she can no longer stay at home. Mm. And it, so it's it's really hard. She's also on the other side of the country. She's in, oh. in Pennsylvania. Um, so I don't get to see her. But this is something that I think might be of value um, to her husband, who's trying to, to go through mm. doing what's yeah. best for her. Um, how would you suggest I might approach Dave about this? Or, um, I mean, do I, I don't want to just say, oh, read this thing on the website. What, yeah. what, how, how do I do this? Um, it's a wonderful question. Um, so first off, on a personal level, feel free to have that person get in contact with me. I'd be happy to have a conversation. Okay. Two is, is, is that I do feel that this is a pretty unique thing that genealogical and historical societies can do with our communities. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we think about our demographics within genealogy and, and historical societies, is many of us are, are seniors and we either A, have have parents that we've dealt with or friends that we have worked with. And what a wonderful way for us to be able to outreach into our communities um, and, and bring them into our circle of genealogy and family history and, and have a wonderful two-way street. So I, I personally think that's our largest opportunity within genealogy and family history. So Mary, I have a similar situation. Um, I have a friend who's struggling. They're really, really struggling with her father-in-law and his dementia. And I was kind of thinking of the same thing. It's like, how do I go and say, I think this would help you. Um, but so yeah, I, so with that situation, I'm going to wait and do it face to face because I see them and say, you know, because it's not my thing. It's, it's the, the Josh, the dementia part. So it's not like me selling my um, on work or whatever. But mm -hmm. I do think there are going to be people that hear about this and want to get it for someone else. Right. Yes. Yes. And that's what I keep thinking, too. I yeah. think it's it's from a child all the way up. And, and again, your family and your close friends and stuff. Um, but again, it's how, how do you, I'm coming back to Mary and what Laura is saying, how do you approach them? Because we have a common friend, her husband is there. There's days he doesn't even know yes. her in the right. house. Right. Exactly. And so how 
you know, he, there's the good days and the bad days. I'll say it that way. And so if she's able to tap into this, you know, it also could be some relief for her sure. because the stress yeah. is huge on her. And, and I don't know how to help except just be there as comfort, you know, as to be the sound and, you know, the listen and mm -hmm. stuff, because I haven't had to deal with that. So I don't know that experience. And so, but I think this is something, um, you know, definitely because I know they were travelers. They did a lot of traveling. And so I'm thinking of the pictures oh, and, yes. and stuff oh, like yes. that might really really be interesting and so and she's close to you um uh -huh. <laughs> we, okay. yeah. yeah she is very right. close to yeah. you yeah mm -hmm. and so I think this is something definitely that could help it just need something to get as the caregiver to get yeah. through there you need to get the so right I think, few caregivers you know that this, this yeah is i think one. that they're the ones and just like mary's thinking of the close friend and that's what i'm thinking of how do i approach you know um to get them to be open to that because they take on the husbands or the spouses take on that they have to take care of them and right. and it's it's just not that time to be able to let go. Sometimes so it's just one more thing, mental. right? One more yes. thing. You want me to, I've got to do this, this, and this. Now I've got to do one more thing. So it's hard to get them yeah. to sit and listen, but if you can, then they can see how much it would help. Well, yeah. and so Mary, I want to come back around with you, but one thing I don't want to lose the point that you just made is, is that part of Josh's classes do teach. Don't, don't forget that you need to take care of you first. Yeah. you as well it's kind of like if you're in an yeah. airplane and those masks fall down you put it yeah. on yourself before you put it on your kid which instinctually right. you'd never do but right. you know if you're in panic you can't help somebody else um so similarly how do you take care of um your love yourself so you can take care of your loved one better than mary um are we did i answer your question are we collaboratively providing you some of the support you might want yeah, I, I mean, more it's it's support that I want to be able to give to my friend's husband, um, yep. right? Because he's the one who's dealing with this. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I have been kicking around. I'm a quilter, as these ladies know, and I've been <laughs> kicking around. I mean, that idea of the storybook and just like, okay, well, I should email Dave and get some pictures and put them together in a quilt. That just would oh. be something that yeah. would be nice for yeah. Barb. To have where she is and would be a conversation and memory starter mm -hmm. um and and so i may think of, of something like that but um i'll play around more with your website and see if i see something there that i feel like could be an inroad for dave if not i may put you in touch put him yeah. in touch with you and there yeah. is somewhere on the website i don't know where but um when the original study came out with the benefits of photo, not the the original original, the most recent <laughs> study came out with all the benefits. So it is, you know, that could also be an inroad. Like there's a lot of literature that says this could be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, you go we'll to try to get all those links into the in the blog post as well, so that people don't have to be looking. That we can just link straight to it. They can find it easier through our links. Good Wonderful. Idea. So, so Mary, so absolutely, we can provide the links, Mary. If you're if you're bored, you're three hours behind us right now. Um, so, um, if it's um, so, it's vividpix.com education. Right across the top is you'll see the education button. You'll see reminisce on the left hand column, and if you click on that reminisce button, you'll see the study. You'll see videos, you'll see lots of classes that we've put together. In fact, one of them uh, was recorded at Allen County Public Library. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you all for having me on. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. we are, we're glad that you came. This is, this is wonderful. And you know, it's, I love how when the community comes together for a purpose too, not just to sell product, not just to, um, Oh my goodness. What's he coming in? Is he an hour late? Maybe. Yeah, he just woke up. I told him we were still on. Okay. Let's <laughs> put him on here for a minute. 
<laughs> Mr. Dan Earl himself. Where is he? There he is. He's coming. There he is. I see him now. At first, I didn't know what you were talking to because your <laughs> eyes went up. I was like, <laughs> what? what? Dan, did you forget what time it is? <laughs> is he coming? Yeah, he's there. He Ryan, hasn't I see his yet. name, but I don't yeah. see his picture. Come on, Dan. We were just wrapping up. Come on. <laughs> Why don't you wrap up? And if he yes. <laughs> go, if yeah, he go materializes, yeah, at least we can say goodbye to him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he, there he is. And in conclusion. And in conclusion, <laughs> Dan Earl dropped by. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. The secret of life is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's too funny. Well, that's I appreciate funny. this information and the yeah. stuff that's coming because yes. just like Mary, I've got that yes. friend. That's dealing with that and anything that we can offer, I, you know, I think it's going to also help us, especially because we're both distant from this yeah. person we care a lot about and right. their spouse and whatever. So I appreciate that. So yeah, and just to, just to, to get you up speed real quick, we were yeah. just, so if you guys could just start from the beginning, yeah. that would be, <laughs> be great. We we're talking about how photos can help people with their um, dementia. The yeah, um, and uh, be able to help them to remember things and, and you know, just kind of um, connect to their to their lives again, you know. And so several, several of us have people that we thought that the program could help. And so we were talking to Rick about how we could get the word out about um, his, his uh, programming and his classes about doing that. So, and the different print options and the things like that, that he's got available. And I was just telling him how much I appreciate that um, his company is doing this and offering these things to help people in the genealogy community, using genealogy, using family history to help our, our and it's not necessarily just senior citizens, but, but people who could right. use uh, photo therapy, you know, using their photos for I mean, I don't know. Maybe people with some kind of depression might be good for them to look at pictures. I don't know. Oh, I any kind of, yeah, I, I'm not a therapist. I, I don't know. But um, the studies do show that it certainly helps with memory. And um, well, I think Mary and I will be the ones that go read that study. I think so, too. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I think yeah. well. So, Dan, before we go, have you had any... Um, any uh chances of uh, have you done this before have you been able to have an experience where photos has, has helped a, a family member or somebody that you know that's having problems with memory with memory loss to be able to you know kind of kind of bring them back and and uh, be able to have them to talk and, and you know maybe have a few minutes of of cognizance knowing where they are and what they're doing yeah we did that with my mom before she passed uh -huh. last summer oh, yeah. um so my dad mm -hmm. would would as, as he was sort of cleaning up the house, he would find pictures and he'd, oh, do you remember this? And um, and her, her dementia advanced very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a very narrow window in which um, she was mm -hmm. there, but it definitely helped um, have have them have some some more moments before she was she was gone mentally before she was gone physically oh absolutely mm -hmm. yeah which is mm -hmm. often often the case so what rick's got available is not only you know for personal to learn things but for um institutions and and you can actually um, become certified in in this process of, of going in and helping people which i think is just it's just wonderful and i think i think it's something that we with people aging you know we've got this big group of of people who are aging it's getting the population is getting bigger and bigger people are living longer um and we need to help them have a better quality of life i think this is a, a one of the answers to that is to help them to to have a productive um but don't uh, wait till people get sick or have these yeah. conditions i think yeah, they need to yeah. start yeah. that routine now right yeah. and one of the things that we didn't mention is Josh's parts and my parts, they kind of mesh together. There's mm -hmm. a lot of intersection. Mm -hmm. So it's not really one or the other, because a lot of times you're spending time reminiscing with someone for their health, but you're also yes. collecting the stories. Yes. It's a win-win. And, win. right. and that's why there's the bundle so yeah. that you can really do, you know, do both things. Exactly. And get a good user experience for everybody. Exactly. Well, they fit together. And Laura, you did an amazing job 
interacting back and forth with Josh so that you were you were making sure that your classes were 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 planning for what Josh's class were going right. to be talking about and then feeding yours to him as well. So he was interacting with what you were going to talk about. Yeah. So it was it was a wonderful collaboration. Thank you. She's good like that. <laughs> She's good. We're proud of her. We are. We'll talk about Dan later. <laughs> Dan, you look terrible, I'm sorry to say. That's all right. It's uh uh we uh we we got an unwanted souvenir from our trip to Florida and <laughs> uh fortunately it's uh it's it's all been mild except for the just the sheer level of exhaustion yeah um, so i was like yeah. i was like oh it's like 4 30 i'll just lay down for a minute and then i woke up and it was 8 45 you know? <laughs> this well, is after a 12 hour night sleep so yeah. well we're glad you popped in for a minute so we knew yeah. really that you're okay because we've been worried about you so we're glad that you're okay well rick thank you so much for coming and this this um, this has been wonderful. I've just been all these ideas about how this can be used, not only, you know, personally in my family, but in the community and genealogy groups. There's there, Societies are always looking for their next project. This would be a wonderful project for them to um, get involved in and then go out to those senior, senior citizen homes and activity, um, their activity places and all those things that you've got, they, they get called different things in different <laughs> different parts of the country yeah. um, and, and help them. And this is a wonderful activity uh, to help, to be able to help them to have something fun and interesting to do that'll help us, you know, as we talked about this, that brain working a little bit. And uh, I just, I think it's really wonderful. So I appreciate you coming on and talking to us about that. We'll have all the links in our blog post. And so if anybody's got any questions further, they can either post those questions on the YouTube video and we can get them back to you or um, on the blog post. So we're we're really happy that you came and shared this with us. And thank you, Laura, for being our other special guest tonight and <laughs> sharing what you've been doing with Vivid Pics as well. So awesome. thank you so much. And with that, we will say goodbye. We're grateful that, that Dan is still alive and living in Cambridge. <laughs> His cameo. His cameo. His cameo. <laughs> yes. First night, we always miss you when we miss everybody on the panel when they can't come. So we we missed you on your travels and we were worried about you and why you didn't come back. And then we knew <laughs> he came back. He was just sick. So anyway, thank you everybody for your participation and your comments and your thoughts tonight. We appreciate it. And with that, we will see you next time on Gen Friends. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See y'all.